Hi, I'm Katie Marr and I am a research student with the Macular Pigment Research Group in the Waterford Institute of Technology um, and we have a particular interest in uh, carotenoid supplements. Um, my background is in chemistry and I did my undergrad, undergrad at the WIT um, and I look in detail at uh, the supplements and how they respond in the body, uh, particularly serum samples, um, but I will also have other projects in relation to the natural sources of these carotenoids in the diet, such as different food types like fruit and vegetables that I have there on the desk. So I'm going to give you a quick tour of my main working facility, which is a biochemical lab in the Waterford Institute. So this is one of the main pieces of equipment that we use to analyze carotenoids, whether it's in a serum sample or a food sample. This at the end of the day is what we use to quantify them and um, look at the three of them individually. So the three carotenoids that we mainly study are lutein, zeaxanthin, and mesozeaxanthin. And this machine will do that. Um, it's a partly chemical machine, analytical scale. What you essentially do is you load your carotenoid serum sample or the extract into the machine. And this part here will separate the three and what will happen then is it'll pass through the lines into a part called the detector, which will analyze them, or identify them, I suppose, um, in the form of kind of peaks like this. So this is um, a separation from this machine of the carotenoids of interest. So these are the type of carotenoids that you would see in a serum sample. Um, the largest peak here is the lutein. And then the smallest one straight after that peak is the total zeaxanthin that contains a combination of zeaxanthin and mesozeaxanthin that was present in that person's serum. Um, the other peaks are different things that will be in serum as well, different kinds of carotenoids, things that you get from your diet, different vitamins and things like that as well. And we have two of these machines. We have one dedicated to each method because you need two methods in order to identify the third carotenoid MZ. Um, because it's so like zeaxanthin in structure that it's almost impossible to separate without a particular type of chemistry, which this second machine has set up on it. You get a lot of your natural carotenoids from your diet, particularly from leafy greens like um, broccolis and spinaches and kale and things like that would be very good sources of lutein, um, to things like corn and stuff which would have very high zeaxanthin and things like peppers, particularly orange peppers would have a really good amount of zeaxanthin in them, so they're good natural sources. So part of our work in the lab is to try and identify just how much of these can you get from the diet and if it's a viable source. So, for example, you might have a lot of zeaxanthin in corn, but can you actually absorb most of that when you eat your food? So we need to kind of try and figure that out in the lab. So one of the main processes we use, first of all, we'd um, do what's called a, a liquid extraction of the food. So you would dice up the edible portions of the food. Um, in something like a blender or what we'd call a homogenizer and get kind of a uniform sample. And you do it with, say, three or four apples to get a good idea of what's going on. Um, then you'd add some what's called solvent, which is a chemical that has a different chemistry, I suppose, to it than water would, um, that it can solubilize the carotenoids much more readily than water can. So you're essentially pulling the carotenoids from the food using the solvent and you'd clean up your sample um, and then you would dry it off and then it's almost ready for injection onto the machine that we spoke about earlier, the HPLC. Okay, so first of all you take a sample size, so there's three units of tomatoes here essentially, three pieces, um, and what you want to do is dice them up and put them in the blender, like so, with a nice sharp agitator in the bottom to really get it diced up fine. And this helps a lot in the chemistry, in the extraction process. So we would start off just dicing these. Okay. So you can see there there's pretty much a tomato paste in there. So we're gonna analyze that. So I need to do is measure out about five grams of this sample. Okay, we're in eight, but that's okay. So there's the sample as it is now. See, that's just food. So the next thing we need to do is we need to add some water to the sample. And then what you do then is you add your solvent. This is a, a kind of a salt mix that helps with the extraction. 
this really does is it helps the carotenoids go into the, the solvent solution. So you can see there the salt is still sitting on the top, but we'll sort that out now in a minute. What you do is you add two what are called internal homogenizers, and what these do is when you're mixing the sample, they help blend the sample further, and you get more carotenoid out of your sample, which is what you want. So that's it there. So give it a good mix like so. And you'd load it on a machine similar to this one here, which is called a vortex. And you'll see why now. And this allows your sample to mix very well. So that you get a lot of interaction between your sample, which is the food, and the solvent you're trying to extract the carotenoid into. So there's the food sample, completely mixed there. And what you need to do now is separate layers, right? And what you'd use to do that is something called a centrifuge. So this is what's called a chilled centrifuge. Because carotenoids are temperature sensitive, it's always good to, to work with them in as cool an environment as possible. And it places a force on the sample, so much so that it will separate the different layers, solvent versus water versus solid matter, based on their density. So what you'd expect to see is there a solvent layer on top, or maybe a bit of the solid because we've added a lot of salt to the water, and then more solid layers on the bottom. So what we'll do then is we'll load it into this machine, and we'll have to add a blank as well which is here, just to balance the machine. And then we'd start the machine. Okay, so you can see here now, the solvent is on the top. Some of the lighter tomato solid is taken into the center and then the, the water with the high salt content is on the bottom because it was the most dense part and you can see the two homogenizers are underneath. But the bright yellow coloration of the solvent layer is the actual carotenoids that were present in the tomato. So what we do then is we then take this liquid, um, we'd remove it to another tube um, which would contain kind of a clean up material um, to kind of further clean up any other things that might be considered contaminants or interfering agents that will be in the sample. And then what we do then is we remove the carotenoid containing component, dry it down, and reconstitute it in the solvents that are suitable for, to our machines, our HPLCs, and then we'd analyze it to check the quantification, well, to check the quantities of the carotenoids in the sample. So, that's it there. You can see it's quite yellow. In a lot of cases, carotenoids will be a quite a yellow color because they're naturally um, light filters. They'll absorb shortwave blue, link, blue light. Um, and they're good antioxidants as well. So in a lot of situations when you're analyzing these things in the lab, you have to add in antioxidizing agents to your methods so that the, the compounds don't degrade during it in case they encounter you know, um, free radicals or something like that that would um, consume them.